Okay, good morning everyone, Dr. Nat here. We are doing chapter 19 on magnetism and for today's class specifically, we are doing magnetic field which is 19.1. Alright, so magnets, you know what magnets is in general, it's something that attracts metals, right? So it's a class of material that can pull ferromagnetic materials. The metals that it attracts is called ferromagnetic materials such as iron and attracts or repels other magnets. So magnet dengan magnet, it will attract or repel whereas with ferromagnetic materials such as iron, it will attract. And ferromagnetic materials such as iron can be magnetized to become permanent magnets and we will talk about this later. And electromagnet, an electromagnet can be made from a coil of wire that acts as a magnet when a, an electric current passes through it. Okay, so we have a coil of wire. This coil of wire is made out of ferromagnetic material. And when I pass through a current called I and it goes through the wire, this wire becomes magnetized or it becomes a magnet. It, this magnet is called electromagnet. Okay, and it stops becoming a magnet when I turn off I. When I turn off the current, there's no more current flowing through the iron, then it does not become a magnet anymore. So that is the property of an electromagnet. You need to have a ferromagnetic material and you need to have current flowing. Right? So... I'm going to skip this. I don't think this is important for you yet. If you are taking advanced physics or a physics degree, you will see this later. Alright, so after completing this chapter, you must be able to calculate the magnetic field due to a current carrying conductor, as I mentioned to you before. When we have a ferromagnetic material and current I, we will get magnet. What am I trying, trying to draw? You will get a magnet. And when you have a magnet, you will have a magnetic field, right? Previously, we talked about electricity and electric field, electric force. Now, we are into the magnetism, so we are talking about magnetic fields. And then, we need to draw the magnetic field lines. So, drawing is also part of the learning outcome, so you need to know how it goes. Okay, moving on. So magnetic field, in static electric charge, there is an area of influence around it called the electric field. Remember, when we have a current, sorry, an electric charge, positive and negative, and there is electric field going from the positive to the negative. This is your electric lines, and then when you have more than one, you have like multiple lines, and that becomes your electric field etc etc you know this you we've talked about this and it will be on your exam so i hope you know about it anyways similarly as a magnet the area of influence around a magnet is called the magnetic field Good job. it's called a magnetic field okay so tadi kita ada electric field now we have magnetic field any ferromagnetic material in magnetic field will be attracted by the magnet so if I put an iron, uh, what do you call this? An iron globe? No. What do you call it? It's a ball. Iron ball. If I put it in this region, sorry, I'm supposed to draw it inside. So if I put my iron ball here, and this is where the electric field, sorry, the magnetic field is, right? So my ball is inside the magnetic field then it will be attracted however if i place my iron ball over here right it's far away and i say i assume that the magnetic field does not reach that place it's far so the iron will not be attracted and you know this already if you have a magnet and an iron something if you place it too far it won't be attracted Okay, so any ferromagnetic material in the magnetic field will be attracted by the magnet. It needs to be within the magnetic field. If it's too far, then it won't be affected. So the direction of magnetic field at any point in space is the direction indicated by the north pole of a small compass needle. 
right so if you have a compass i don't know if you have one but it looks like this assuming that it looks better in real life so there is a needle that keeps on flickering when you try to orient yourself right when you try to place the compass on the ground and you like so the needle also follows right when you Pusing ke kanan, di ke kiri. Pusing ke kiri, di ke kanan. So, it depends on where your north pole is. That is where the needle will point. So, it will always point towards the north. Okay, so you have the magnetic field lines. So, magnetic field lines never intersect. This is also the case for electric field lines. We've seen this. So, if I had electric field, it would not intersect. I won't have electric field like this. No. It won't intersect ever. So the same case goes for magnetic fields. The magnetic field lines never intersect. So as you can see over here, they don't intersect even though they are close together. This is far apart. This is close. So when you have like field lines that are very close together, it means that the magnetic field is stronger over here. Whereas when the magnetic field lines are far apart, so it is less strong or weaker okay so here um where else where else so this is weaker and this is stronger because they are close together okay so magnetic fields can be visualized using magnetic field lines so the magnetic field lines pattern can be traced using a compass so I told you before a compass will always show will always point towards the north pole, right? However, when it is put near a magnet, it will give you the direction of magnetic field lines. So if I were to place a compass over here, it will show here. This is the direction of the compass. So it follows the magnetic field line. Okay, so remember, so a compass in general points towards the north pole. But if you put a compass near a magnet, it will show you the direction of the magnetic field lines. Okay, so this direction, let's see. So we have one going up here, here, here. So it follows like this. So it goes from north to south. And if I put it here, it goes from north to south. Even though I did not put any compass over here, but I can already tell that the direction of the compass will be like this okay and then if i put another compass down here it will go from north to south north to south so similarly in the electric field or in the electricity sorry in the electro electrostatics topic we have the positive charge and the negative charge it went from positive to negative the electric field line always starts from the positive and ends at the negative. Here in the magnetic magnetism, the magnetic field line starts from the north and ends at the south. Okay, so sounding much a negative lah. Okay. Mm, oh, let's see about the previous slide. Kejap. So here we have a north and south pole of the magnet. So here you can see that this is the pattern. So it goes from now north to south, north to south. Okay, so here you can't see, but if we extend the image, it should be looking like. Oops, that's a bad one. It should be looking like this. Okay, so it's always north to south, and it's like in circles. Okay, so here are other examples of magnetic field lines, magnetic field lines pattern for unlike poles. So here I have a north and south, remember, north goes to south. So here, the magnetic field lines will look like this. This is what is going on. So this is the direction. Okay, they give you the pattern but they don't specify the direction. The direction is always from north to south. And when you have light poles, so this guy is north. This guy is also north. It's not Z, eh? it's north. N. Okay, so north, they can't. North doesn't go to north. So we'll try to deflect. So the magnetic field from this guy tries to deflect away from the other north pole. So it goes this way. It tries to deflect. 
dia tak nak berjumpa because they don't like uh, people of the same personality. Yeah, that's not true. Usually, mm, okay, I'm gonna refrain myself from commenting on that. Anyway, so here is a general diagram of a magnetic field for N, for north and south. Okay, north goes to south. Here you can see that when at the center it's like almost a perfect line, but over here it's like slightly like bending. Okay, it's just how it is. Okay, moving on. Um, similarities of magnetic field lines and electric field lines. So I told you before, we had we had this diagram before. Like we have a positive and a negative. And it goes from positive to negative, positive to negative. And the lines do not ever intersect. We talked about this in dipole, I remember. So if I can remember, you should remember two. Okay, so dipole, uh, this was what was discussed. And if we had similar charges, it would try to deflect away from the other charge. Okay, so summer. So positive goes to negative, north goes to south. Moving on, so magnetic field strength called B, okay, in electricity, sorry, in electrostatics, we called electric field or E something, electricity, sorry, electric force, electric field, it was E, right? E was electric field, force was F sub E or F sub capital E, doesn't really matter, it's force. Um, so here, the symbol for magnetic magnetism or anything magnet is B. Previously, it was E for electrostatics. This guy is B. And the SI unit is Tesla. Okay? So the Tesla, as in the car. But the car stole the name. So actually, Tesla is a derivation. I mean, the car is like stole the name, right? Okay, so here we have a north and a south pole. The north goes to the south. Okay. Okay, so in electrostatics, the test charge is static. In electromagnetics, the test charge is moving because we have current. So the difference between electrostatics and magnetism is basically the movement of charges so here in electrostatic i told you the static the charges are static or sometimes we bring the a test charge from infinity to a certain place but then it becomes static right so everything can come to a stop however in magnetism you need to have current and current means flowing charges so flowing charges means it's not static so in electromagnetics test charge is moving Sorry, I said magnetism, but uh, specifically, we are talking about electromagnetism. Electromagnetism, okay? So, electromagnets. First, observe this guy, Hans Christian Orsted. I don't know how to pronounce his name. First, observe that a compass needle deflects, indicating the presence of a magnetic field. What does it mean by deflect? I told you previously that when we have a north pole and a north pole, this guy tries to deflect, right? But when I talk about a compass and the compass is deflecting, it means that simply that I the needle is going, it's flickering. The needle is deflecting or flickering. So he saw what the compass was doing when he put a compass near a conductor that has current flowing in it. So this is the compass that he put and when he tried to move it, it the needle moved. Right, because magnetic field changes as you go along the route or as you go further away, it also changes. So he noticed that when he put the compass somewhere around the conductor carrying current, it the needle flickered, indicating electromagnet is happening or the magnetic field is there. Okay. Eh, kenapa macam ulang ni? Okay. So, magnetic field of a current carrying conductor is the magnetic field pattern are concentric circles. Um, have we seen this before? Not yet. The direction is determined by the right hand rule 
and the direction of the magnetic is indicated by the deflection of the compass. Okay, so direction is indicated by the deflection of the compass. For example, I have this compass. Everyone is pointing towards here. This is the direction of all the compasses pointing at. So I can say, okay, the, the compass in general points towards the North Pole. However, when I put in current in this conductor, suddenly the compass needle starts to flicker, right? It starts to flicker. So now it orients itself in a way that forms a circle. So this is what it means by concentric circles. And the direction is determined by the right hand rule. So I'm going to show you. I don't know if you've seen this before. So this is my right hand. I don't know what you're seeing. I hope this is my right hand. I don't know. This, okay, use your right hand. Your thumb is the direction of your current. Okay? So here, okay, ada gambar tangan kat sini bagus. So this is my hand. My hand is cute. So this is direction of my thumb. The thumb should point towards the direction of the current. And my hand curls, right? As you can see, my fingers, my four fingers curls. It curls in a way like this, right? So my hand is curling this way, which means that this is the direction of my magnetic field or B. Okay, so again, right hand rule, your thumb points towards the current, your fingers tell you the direction of your magnetic field. Okay, so here your fingers are pointing this way, it's going anti-clockwise, so your magnetic field should also be anti-clockwise. This is anti-clockwise, okay? So let's say your current is flowing downwards. Okay, you still have the same conductor. I don't know why my drawing is bad today, but it's always bad. So the current is flowing down, right? So using my right hand rule, right? Hello, hello. So using my right hand rule, the previously the eye was like this. Now the eye is going down. So now my fingers curl towards clockwise. Okay, so now instead of going anti-clockwise, because the direction of current changed, now it's going clockwise. So here, the direction of magnetic field changes to become clockwise. Okay, so again, if you test this with the compass around the conductor, you will see that the compass deflects in the direction of your magnetic field. So for, in, for this case, let's say that this eye going up is not there and the eye is going down. Right, I told you going down curling clockwise so clockwise so the compass will point this way okay so that is your direction it will have a new direction so the direction of magnetic field is indicated by the direction of the needle compass or the deflection okay so this is the magnetic field of current carrying conductor using the right hand rule or right hand screw rule is the same thing right hand screw rule or right hand rule eye goes up fingers four fingers shows the direction of your magnetic field okay so now i'm telling you a new term here so this is saying current out of the page what does it mean and then we have current into the page again what does it mean so current out of the page is given by this bullet Okay, bullet. Uh, basically, a dot lah. Okay, so this is a bullet. Whereas, current into the page, I will tell you what it is in a bit, you indicate it by an X. Now, let's imagine an arrow. So, I have an arrow. So, I have an arrow. And this arrow looks like this. Arrow yang orang main anak panah tu. Sorry, anak panah. Main apa panggil? Mm, okay, Robin Hood. You know that arrow lah. Okay, so it looks like this, right? Right? Okay. Now, if I have a paper and I try... My paper is like this. My paper is like this. Ni melintang lah kan? Paper kan? Oh, I have a paper here. Yes. So, a paper looks like this, right? But my paper is like this now. Okay, this is the paper. Now, this is my uh, arrow. My anak panah. 
Now my anak panah goes into the paper through the paper, right? It goes into the paper. Kalau saya nak terkoyakkan, dia kata tembus lah. So it will go into the page. Anak panah goes into the page like this, right? Just like that, goes like that. Okay, what does it mean? Now let's look back at this diagram. When I put the Sorry, what call this? When I put the arrow into the paper, what I'm seeing over here, this is my eyes. I'm looking from this angle. I'm saying, ah, okay, so I only see the butt of the arrow. And the butt of the arrow looks like this. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, again. Ni daripada angle mentah mana ni, terbalik. Let's do it again. Let me repeat myself. Because that, that is what I like to do. So, this is my paper, right? Paper yang macam ni. Okay, let's use another angle. Okay, so this is me. I'm looking at it at, from this angle. Remember, the tip of my pen is the tip of the arrow. And the butt of my pen is the butt of the arrow. So, when I put it into the paper, what I'm seeing is the butt of the paper. Butt of the paper, butt of the arrow. Okay, so again, I'm going to draw that. So, this is my arrow. Right? My arrow. Okay, so this is me. Uh, how do I how do I draw myself? Um, so, this is me over here. So, I am looking from this angle. So, what do I see? I see the butt of the arrow. The butt of the arrow looks like an X. So, I know that the current is going into the page. Okay, so this is this is what it means when it goes into the page. Okay, what about out of the page? Again, same scenario. We have a paper over here. And I try to draw my arrow. Okay, my arrow looks like that. From down, from down there. Daripada, daripada bawah lah, tapi tembus. Okay, so it's like that. Right? So what I'm seeing, I'm here. I'm seeing, I'm over here. What do I see? I see the tip of the arrow. And the tip of the arrow looks like a bullet or a dot. Right? So this means that uh, what I'm seeing is the current out of the page. This guy is current into the page. Into page. Out of page. Okay? So remember the arrow. The arrow indicates the direction of your eye. So if I were to draw my arrow over here, it would look like this. Okay, so if I'm over here, what I'm seeing is a dot. But if I'm over here, down below, what I'm seeing is the X. Okay, kita akan assume that the paper is over here. Like that. So if I'm down here, I will see an X. If I'm up here, I will see a dot. Okay, so this is what I'm seeing. This is what I'm seeing from up here. Okay, moving on. So, magnetic field of a long straight wire. So, the magnetic field strength, B. Oh, I don't like this color. Let's use a different color. Let's use pink. So, the magnetic field, oh, this is bad too. Let's use yellow. The typical one. Magnetic field strength, B, depends on the size of the current. The distance from the wire, remember, the further you are away from the source or from the magnet, the weaker your magnetic field line is, right? I mean, or the more far apart your magnetic field lines are and the weaker your magnetic field is. So, lagi jauh, lagi weaker lah. Okay, so the distance also plays a role in determining the magnetic field strength B, the size of the current, Lagi besar current, selalunya lagi kuat lah. Magnet. Okay, so a constant called permeability, mu. Mu. A constant called permeability, which is a measure of the extent to which the surrounding medium reinforces the magnetic field. Mm, so it's basically saying the environment can, um, the environment can affect the strength of the magnetic field. Sometimes it supports it to become better. Sometimes it makes it weaker. So, this guy is actually a constant. 
Okay, it depends on the environment that we are in. So, in typical uh, atas darat, mm, humid weather, all plays a role. So, there's a certain constant value that we need to put into our equation to find the magnetic field strength. Of course, with physics, we start with the concept and then we go to the equations. So, the magnitude of magnetic field strength B at a distance R from a wire carrying current I. So, it's telling you, if I want to know what is the magnetic field strength at this point, right? At this point, I can use this equation. So, hey, what's the magnetic field strength over here? I can use this equation. This equation is B, magnetic field strength equals to mu naught, the constant, I is your current. Okay, I is your current. And 2 pi r. 2 pi r. Because if we have a current, a conductor carrying current, the magnetic field forms a circle. So the circumference of the circle is circumference is 2 pi r. And what is r in this case? R is a. So here my equation should be mu naught i, whatever the i is, 2 pi a, or whatever your radius is. If you want to know what is the magnetic field over here, you can. But you need to know what is the r over here. The r should be bigger than a. Let's say a is 5 and r is 10. So mu naught i, 2 pi over 5 will be bigger than mu naught i 2 pi to 10 because the denominator is greater so you can see with distance the b decreases so the bigger your r the smaller your b the bigger your i let's use a different color for that the bigger your i the bigger your b okay so here, mu naught is the permeability, permeability of free space. We're just going to assume it's free space. So the value is 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7. Tesla meter per ampere. So Tesla meter per ampere. So if, uh, let's, use, let's do dimensional analysis. Okay, so let's do it over here. Hopefully I have enough space. So B is equal to... 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7 tesla meter over ampere and my current let's say is 5 ampere current is in amperes right and then we have 2 pi and our radius is always in meters because that's the si unit so let's say it's 10 so it's 10 meters so what cancels out here our meter cancels out with the meter down there our ampere also cancels out. We are left with Tesla. So this equation gives us um, a magnitude that is in Tesla units. Okay. So your answer should be in Tesla. Okay. Jangan pandai-pandai tukar. Okay, next one. The magnetic field of current carrying loop. Okay, just now we talked about straight wire. Straight wire current atas atau bawah tak kisah and it will form a circle around the wire this guy is a coil it's not a straight wire it is a coil or a loop okay this guy is a straight wire so it's different the magnetic field depends on how the current is flowing. So if it flows straight, it forms a circle around the conductor. Here we have a loop. So now I have the situation changes because I have, let's say my current flows from here. So this guy, at this point, it is going out of the page. Okay, what is the symbol for out of the page? It is a dot and this guy flows down here and at this point, the I is like this. So it's going into the page and this is the sign. It's an X. So 
Previously, when we had a straight wire, there was only one direction of eye. Now we have two directions of eye. So this is your first eye and this is your second eye, I1 and I2. But they are from the same source. But it changes the magnetic field, right? So imagine we have a straight wire over here using my right hand rule. I will see that a current flowing upwards will give me a clockwise clockwise B magnetic field okay I use this um, what do you call this half arrow to indicate that the B is a vector it has direction and also magnitude whereas for the I over here is going into the page using my right hand rule going into the page going downwards my magnetic field will be going clockwise as well Wait, tadi tu? Oh sorry, it's anti-clockwise. I am sorry. So it's anti-clockwise. This guy is... Wait, this one is anti-clockwise. This guy is clockwise. Okay. So anti-clockwise, clockwise. Please try it yourself because nanti dalam exam, hmm, nanti jangan tanya saya kan, macam nak buat. Okay, so, your, you have your current going up over here. So you use your current, your, sorry, your right hand, right hand rule like this. Whereas for the other side over here, your current is going down. Use your right hand rule. Your direction of current, sorry, your direction of magnetic field follows your fingers. Okay, so that is the pattern that you will see for your um, current carrying loop. Okay, so kat sini ada gambar lagi satu. Kejap, saya cuba naikkan. Oopsie. Okay, so here is another picture. So here tadi, kita tengok daripada angle macam ni. Now, if I'm looking at from down here. So tadi, I'm looking at, this is my eyes. So I'm looking at this way, Allah juling pula. So th that is my eyes, so I'm looking at it from that angle. Now when I flip it, I'm my eyes is over here, so this is where I'm looking at. This is the, I mean like, my view, okay? So in my view over here, I can see that my eye, I start my eye over here, right? So I flow through the loop. So in this direction, my eye is going into the page, so I will see an X. And over here, it is going out of the page. So I will see a bullet. Okay, so here I've redrawn the eyes. The eyes is looking that in that view. Kau ni tengok pasal sini, tapi current kat sini kan, macam tak betul pula. So here my eyes is looking in that view eh. So this is what I'm going to see. Even though they are the same, they are the same carry, current carrying loop. It depends on where I'm looking at. So here I'm looking from the top. Daripada sini. Tadi saya tengok dari sini. This is A. This is um, view point A, right? View point A over here is the same as view point A from here. And this is the, another view point B. So really you have to look at which angle you are looking at to find out the magnetic field. Use your right hand rule, find out the direction of I, then it will fall into place, okay? So previously we talked about the equation for, previously we talked about the equation for a magnetic field around a current, uh, sorry, a conductor, straight wire conductor carrying current, right? So it was, what was it? It was um, like this and we had a circle of B. Right, depending on the direction of the current, you will know whether your B is clockwise or anti-clockwise. So the equation for that was B equals to not I over 2 pi R, right? So here, here we have another instance of um, a conductor carrying a current and the magnetic field of course changes and we talked about this in the earlier slide. So the equation for B for this type of configuration is mu naught i which is the same as this guy 
but now it's only 2R. In this, um, in this um, structure, in this conductor, the magnetic field line is not a circle. It's not circular like the, the one before, right? So the one before was circular, so we talked about its circumference, which is, which is the circumference of the circle, which is 2 pi r. Here, it's not a circle, so it's just 2 r, okay? So this guy is just 2 r. Now, this guy is a coil or a loop, right? I told you it's a coil or a loop. Now, the coil or loop can be more than one. So for instance, I have like this and another one, and then baru dia patah balik. How do I do this? One, uh, pusing, satu, dua, okay, patah balik. So, ada dua coil. So, the, depending on the number of coil, your equation becomes uh, B equals to N mu naught I over 2R. So, your N depends on the number of coils. If your coil is only one, then you can just omit the N from the equation. If your N, sorry, if your coil is more than one, so it needs to be the n should be there lah. Okay, so the number of calls typically for um, your questions nanti that you will see is like 30, 50. So the n, number of n is crucial. Okay, let's talk about the equation. When your number of loops increases, right, your loop increases. Contoh, huh? so this one is 1, 2, 3. Sorry, 1, 2, 3. So you have 3. So, when your N increases, your B also increases. When your I increases, your B also increases, right? When you have a stronger current, your magnetic field will also be stronger. When you have a... When you want to find out... Sorry, the R... I have not talked to you about the R. The R is the radius of the coil. The R is the radius of the coil. So, this coil is R. Okay, so the bigger your coil is the bigger your r the bigger your coil is the bigger your r the smaller your b so a smaller coil will give you a larger b so it's big r small b okay the bigger your coil the bigger your radius the smaller your b okay so we have two equations now one was a straight wire this one is a loop or coil. Okay, so this is an example, a horizontal wire. So it's a straight wire, straight conductor carrying current. It carries a current of 15 amperes. So based on just memory, uh, we know that the equation for such a conductor is mu naught i. And we know that the magnetic field around a straight wire is a circle. So it's 2 pi r. Okay, r is the distance that you want to find out distance of interest okay so it carries a current of 15 ampere so this guy is 15 a and what is the magnitude of magnetic field it produces at a point 5 centimeter so 5 centimeter remember you must always use si units so this guy is 0 0.05 is it 0 0.5 okay sorry 0 0.05 meter okay so let's try to do it ourselves first 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7 times 15 ampere divided by 2 pi times 0 0.05 okay so that is your b so the same 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7 times 15 times 2 pi times 0 0.05 Okay, so your answer will be 6 times 10 to the minus 5 Tesla. Please, in your exam, please include your units. If not, you will not get the marks for your answer. Okay, moving on to the next example. Oh, I'm out of time. At what distance of a straight long wire? So, we, it's asking, hey, what's the distance from the straight long wire? Remember, we're talking about a circle. It's asking... What should be the distance from the long wire, straight long wire, or what is the radius? Okay, wire carrying, carrying a current of 5 ampere. So, 5 ampere. Um, 
produced the magnetic field of 50 micro tesla so it's saying b is equal to 50 times 10 to the minus 6 tesla okay so for this type of um, structure or the type of the equation should be b equals to mu naught i over 2 pi r which is the same as the example before for all conductors carrying current this should be the equation okay so mu naught is 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7 your i is 5 ampere right and then 2 pi r r is the distance that you are trying to find because it's asking you at what distance of a straight long wire will it produce a magnetic field of 50 micro tesla so this is the distance from the straight long wire so this is 50 times 10 to the minus 6 and then you will try to solve for r okay so your r is 2 times 10 to the minus 2 so if we were to imagine how this looks like the radius is 0 0.02 centi sorry it's meter which is um, 2 centimeter right so it's 2 centimeter away from the current carrying conductor so at this point 2 centimeter away at this point 2 centimeter away you will have a b that is equal to 50 micro tesla so that is the strength of the magnetic field at that point again if you want to find uh, the magnetic field further away so your b will be weaker or smaller and then this is another example this is the coil by right we know already know we should already know what is the equation for a current carrying coil which is b is equal to n if it's more than one or you can omit it mu naught if it's just one mu naught i over 2r so the denominator is not 2 pi r it's just 2r what is r r is the radius of the coil okay so it's very very important to distinguish between the r from the first equation to the r in this equation they are not the same okay so the r is from here to here just basically the radius of the coil okay so here the equation this is the equation that we should use a 1.5 meter long wire is formed into a plane coil of one turn so here we know n is equal to 1 so it's using 1.5 to form the entire coil so if 1.5 forms the entire coil that should be equal to the circumference of the coil or the you call it circumference yes circumference of the coil which is 2 pi r and then from here we can know what is the radius of the coil right so r is equal to 1.5 divided by 2 pi i don't know it's 0 0.24 it's over there oopsie what is going on 0 0.24 okay so now it means i need to take a break because it's causing me trouble okay nanti saya akan habiskan